In this video, we're going to discuss and demonstrate soft tissue technique applied to the cervical spine. So I'm going to be pushing on a couple areas on your neck, from the bottom of your neck to the top, and I'm going to be feeling for any areas that might be tender uh, or tense uh, that we need to treat. Uh, let me know if you're uncomfortable or if anything hurts you, and I can stop at any time. Okay? All right. So now we're going to begin by assessing the cervical soft tissues. So we want to make sure that our chair and table height are appropriate so that we're uh, not leaning forward too far, so that our arms aren't too high, uh, so that we can be comfortable as we're assessing and treating our patient. So now in assessing our patient's cervical paraspinal tissues, we're going to be again assessing for any evidence of somatic dysfunction. So any tissue texture change, any muscle hypertonicity, asymmetry in that muscle hypertonicity from one side to the other. And I'm feeling a little bit of hypertonicity on this left side and right side, but a little bit more so on this left side in the lower cervical spine. And I'm also feeling a little bit more on this left side uh, in the middle to upper cervical spine. And I'm also going to be uh, appreciating for any tenderness and asking my patient, so is any of these areas tender? Um, a little bit towards the top. Towards the top? Okay. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of tenderness in the upper cervical region. So now I'm going to begin with my first example, which is cradling with traction or bilateral longitudinal stretching. So I can start from the bottom of the cervical paraspinals. I'm going to be using my hands uh, to cradle the head, and I can either start on the sides of the patient's head or I can cradle completely under my patient's head. And then I'm going to take my fingers and lateral to the spinous processes, find the paraspinal musculature, and then press anteriorly, and then pull superiorly, applying a longitudinal stretch to those cervical paraspinal tissues. Now I can do this as a rhythmic, intermittent kneading and stretching, applying that pressure to any areas that appear to be uh, hypertonic or appear to be restricted, or if there's any particular area where I want to apply more pressure to, I can uh, press anteriorly, lift superiorly, and then apply a sustained pressure until I feel soft tissue release. And then I'm going to repeat until uh, I cover all of the areas of the cervical spine where there's any restriction. As part of that cradling motion, I'm going to be scooping my fingers uh, superiorly and leaning back slightly using my weight to my advantage. For my next example, I'm going to be performing a suboccipital release. So now I'm going to begin by cradling the occiput. And I'm going to be taking my fingers and uh, assessing the suboccipital tissues. Now once I've assessed the suboccipital tissues, I'm going to be moving my fingers just slightly inferior so that I can hook on those tissues and press anteriorly and then superiorly. And I can also apply a little bit of a lateral tension which will help to spread those tissues to apply a longitudinal and perpendicular stretch to those tissues. Now I can do this again in an intermittent fashion, stretching and kneading those suboccipital tissues, or I can apply a sustained pressure, pushing anteriorly, pulling superiorly, and then adding a little bit of lateral pressure as needed to engage the musculature. Now if I apply sustained inhibitory pressure, now I can wait until I feel any evidence of tissue release, any softening of the tissues, any change in temperature, any pulsations, and that could take uh, 30 to 60 seconds. And now here I'm feeling a softening of tissues, and then I can return my patient back to neutral and reassess for evidence of somatic dysfunction.